good. Here I went ahead and put everything on Facebook so we could just click and go. All right, so Facebook Live. And I'm connected, it says. And sleeping in Seattle, sisters. I just put a thing out there on the event that says that we're just having a little glitch. We'll be there in a moment. Don't go away. And we are live. Yay. See, I knew if we just... <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Hello, everybody. Happy holidays. Hi, Helen. Hello. I am using my second screen to follow along with chats, et cetera. Um, All right. But my well, phone has to catch up because it's not, it hasn't, we're live, but my phone doesn't know it yet. It's trying. <laughs> well, and you and I had such a good conversation, not only a few weeks ago about this when we did the last one in November, but then yesterday we had a really good conversation and it was interesting. And I'm sure everybody is going to relate to this, but we're supposed to like have a handle on lifestyle and sleeping well. And that has not been the case for either one of us. It's been hard this year. I mean, you know, not as hard as always, but like I, I, still got hit back a little bit. You know, I had a full house of people. My schedule was all off and I, I was starting to drag a little bit. My sleep was, you know, um, being disrupted. And I, I noticed myself falling into some old bad habits that I had to, I had to like talk myself out of. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did that too. I mean, I will have a confession right here as we get going because I don't know what happened. I mean, I have my ritual and I went to bed and I don't even know what possessed me, but I'm sure people can re relate to this and that I started, I saw a short, why I would even be on YouTube. I don't know. I don't even no. know where it came yeah. from, but and maybe it was on Facebook. I don't know. Cause you know, it's everywhere. And I followed this family and it was so entertaining and then I got addicted and we're going to talk about this dopamine hit, right? And it was like 12 o'clock, 1230. My logical brain was saying, stop. In fact, you have a full day tomorrow and you have to get up earlier than usual. And I couldn't stop. Yes. Those like it, that instant gratification of like a little bit of happy, a little bit of happy. And like, it makes you laugh. It's yeah, I I do the same thing with casual games and it's like I I have deleted them all off my phone. Um but the other day in the amidst the chaos of my loving and wonderful family. Like we were, we are not a dysfunctional family. We are totally supportive of one another, but it's just different stress than your nuclear family, right? I had in-laws and my dad and I was driving a minivan the entire time which is not my jam and <laughs> I, like I downloaded a new game and started playing and was like I just need to zone out here for a little bit but what happens is that then I you it's so hard to pull yourself out and stop Oh yeah. And boy, did I suffer the next day too. And so I, I don't know if anybody else can relate to that where it doesn't matter. It's the holidays and your schedule, your routine, your finances, your diet. It's inevitable. I think maybe, you know, we talked about grace and space and embrace. I think part of that is the embrace component Yes. Like you just have to embrace it's the holidays and we're going to get thrown off a little bit. And what can you do to put yourself back on? So let's talk about grace. Yes. That whole aspect of giving yourself grace. Like I, I know that I'm kind of a, a person who has always strived for perfection and success. And so um, having that faltering and that failure I, um, I had to give myself grace about it and say, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean anything. And for me, I always try to remind myself to talk to myself inside my head, like I would a good friend or like a kiddo that I care and love about. And suddenly I'm a lot kinder to myself. <laughs> so you just have to give myself that grace that it was, it's okay. You know, yeah. I've since deleted the game off of my phone again, and we're just, 
we're starting new. We're getting back oh. on the bandwagon mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Right. And the and the psychology of grace and being kind to yourself and everything you just shared is that it actually sets us up to move back into or forward with a healthier choice. Because when you beat yourself up in shame and that just, it's like you, you, it's like, again, if you're bawling out a child and yelling that they, they, they cowered in, right? Right. And, but when you're like, oh, sweetheart, you know, how does that feel? And uh, so that's, again, what I was doing. I'm like, all right, your eyes are burning. And the parent in me is saying, and then the child in me is saying, just one more, right? We all, yep, yep. just one like, more no, gift. Just, I'll just buy one more gift. I, I, I'll just do this one more thing, right? And then there's this like, okay, sweetheart, <laughs> you know, the, this is not really for your highest and best good. And then you can, and we'll talk about that frontal lobe too, like how you move into that logical part of your brain, because what gets hit is, I mean, there's so much going on with your brain and the, the hormones and everything with wh whether it's again, the sugar that you're eating or whatever it is. So the grace is the kindness that allows you to snap out of it and move forward in a, in a more healthy way. Yeah. That I whole idea of just being able to love yourself in the middle of, of everything. I mean, you know, we, we love our loved ones at their best and their worst. And so you have to love yourself at your best and your worst too. And know that like, you'll have, fewer and fewer of those worst moments and your worst will get higher and higher <laughs> if you just keep on loving yourself into um, your recovery or your restoration or your, your better self, you know, you, but the other day I was listening to someone and they said, you know, you are you now and you're you when you're going to get to your goal. And that whole time as you're progressing forward, you are still you and you're deserving of all of your own love and support and appreciation and the investment in yourself. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And some of the other things we talked about is what would be three very small routines or good hat, whatever that you could reinstate, right? So maybe it is like put a, put a glass of water in between the coffee or the drinks, right? What could you do? What are three small things? And then the other is, and I love the story that you had with your whole family being in your house, but that I think you said something like we, we were talking about preserving enough space and time, which we're going to talk about space in a minute of, of, whatever that ritual is, right? So you were talking about that you had to make a bed in your living room for someone. Yes, yeah. So one of the graces of having a full house is that it means our sofa bed is in use. And that sofa bed is in the main living space. So that's where the TV is. It's adjacent to the kitchen. And so one of the saving graces of having the full house was just being able to say, okay, like at nine o'clock, we are making this bed up. It is converting into one of our guests' private space and everyone else is going to go to their private spaces and we're going to kind of calm things down. <laughs> and go to sleep <laughs> or read a book or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But instead of staying up and chatting and gabbing until like 10 a.m. or, or 10, you know, 10 p.m. or 11 or 12, we really preserved that because, you know, there was somebody's who somebody's space and time who we needed to respect and who was, we're on the West Coast. They were coming from East Coast time and it was like their first week of transitioning into our time. So, you know, nine o'clock is their midnight. They needed to- yeah rest. And you know, a solution could be for somebody that they just like put a sofa bed in their living room and have their guest over. <laughs> you know, because in my family, oh no, we're playing games. There's puzzles going on. There's all kinds of stuff going on until one, two, three o'clock. I mean, that's just kind of like part of 
Yes, like, that's part of our culture too. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Exactly. And so we were then talking about space. And this was interesting because I put this out on Facebook and asked people like, how do you create you space? And it's, and I got all kinds, like well, somebody said they get in their car. And I thought, wow, that's true. I remember I was at um, a uh, family uh, engagement. And I, even though we talked about last month about going for a walk and incorporating activity and keeping that going. But for me too, I went for a walk by myself. I actually called a friend and I was like, get, would talk me down. But that space of being outside, being by myself gave me that space to regroup and just take a breath and re you know regain my sanity and change my perspective a little bit so yeah that was that was a really good insight as far as like space can be in your car it could be for a walk and just making sure or like you everybody at nine o'clock went into their own rooms that was their your space yep and it was it was nice too because we did get to play games. Like we still watched movies together. We still did all those fun activities, but we were not nearly as crabby as one at one another as we could have been <laughs> if we'd been sleep deprived. On top of it all, well, that's just it too. We got to recognize that people are stressed and they are sleep deprived, ourselves may be included. And so again, that goes back to that grace thing. I too, you know, emotions can run high. And that's another reason to have the space that you might need. Uh, I have many a time, I mean, I don't think it's great to suppress your emotions, but I do think constructively we need to express them. And again, sometimes just going for a walk and walking really fast or in my car, I've been like, you know, or screaming, screaming. I'm not, right. I'm not distraught, dist disturbing anybody. And hopefully, you know, I'm fleeting by someone, but just getting that energy out that all that emotion expressed in a healthy way is another reason that we need to maybe have space to do that for our health, that, that breath that you can take. And, you know, the emotions can be positive or negative. Um, Several years ago, back in 2018, my mom passed away in October. So it was a very rough holiday for our whole family. There was a ton of grief going on. It was very sudden passing. And um, I, we watched, I can't tell you how many sappy Christmas rom-coms we watched because they, you, you know, they're going to make you cry and all you wanted to do was cry. And so it gave me that space to just cry without having to be like, I'm sad and it's not appropriate. I mean, it was grief is always appropriate. However you grieve is how you grieve, but like that sadness and just being able to like cry those tears. And like for my dad too, cause you know, he's not a crier, but like yeah. it was a big loss. You know, it's great because you're used it almost like a catalyst mm -hmm. or, you know, so that was really, and again, you can watch any movie anytime or read a book or but I do think it's so important for us to have our feelings, our emotions, and that's part of what happens at the holidays. Yeah. I want to say you just can't like, you can't move past them if you're sitting on top of them, right? If Ooh. you're pushing those emotions down and you're sitting on top of them, they're just, all you can do is manage that mountain. But if you just let those floodgates happen, then you can take chance and sort of manage the flow of the river, right? And figure out, okay, this is going to be a better option for me next time or moving forward. You have to let it all go. Well, and you have to, and that's why we really want to encourage people to have space because what happens is we end up letting it go or somebody else lets it go inappropriately directly to a person that they, you know, right. so sometimes that happens too, where we're, we're suppressing, suppressing and not expressing, or even if you don't express it to the person directly, pen it out, do something because it's going to come out one way or the other. And, yes. you, you know, and it's hard to pull it back or take it back when it's with another person, especially- <laughs> You know, because we're right. with people that we're not usually, you know, this is like, well, if it comes out, when you're, yeah, when you're hurting somebody else, then, then it just makes a bigger mess. You want it yeah. to you want to be able to get those emotions out in a way that 
is productive to you and not destructive to anyone else. Yeah. Go to the, go in the bathroom and turn on the faucet and, you know, or stomp your feet or whatever, you, you know, cry with the, whatever. And we I know all- there are people who, you know, they, they make time to go to the gym. It's, it's like, they have to get to the gym. And even if it means they wake up half an hour earlier, <laughs> um, they're, that that time at the gym is precious. So they're balancing out their sleep time with their, um, you know, emotional regulation time and physical regulation. Right. Yeah. Fitness is like, I mean, I always said, if I could just put 20 minutes in a pill and give it to everybody, they, they would, they would be fine. But Eight hours of sleep, 20 minutes a day of exercise and a pill. We'd have such <laughs> a healthy society. <laughs> Exactly. The other thing too, is we, um, you know, incorporate into your environment humming, Mm -hmm. uh, a mudra, which is a hand gesture, any kind of self-soothing in your head, you know, an affirmation like this is just a moment, um, all is well, this too shall pass. So those could be some other tools that uh, we threw down for you to incorporate. And then we talked about too, or in the very beginning about this dopamine hit or these, where we get out of our good habits or healthier habits. Um, and so, or we, we just move into so much pleasure that we don't want it to end. Yeah. And how do we counterbalance that? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you're gonna, it, it's the pendulum's gonna swing. And so it's just trying to get it back to the the place where it's gonna go. So if the if the problem is, is you haven't gotten enough sleep, maybe you're listen to your body when it's time to take a nap. And that might mean that you're not able to do something else the next day, but like those naps are super important. Listen to your body so you don't get sick and you know it doesn't get it doesn't get worse and worse and worse. So trying to get that pendulum to swing back into its normal um rhythms first. So yeah, that's the sleep yeah. taking a nap um is super important. You, you know, you download the game or you're watching the app late at night, one night, like then you, you delete the game or you, you know, you make sure you put your phone somewhere else. <laughs> Whatever it is. Well the first to- thing, yeah, the first thing is to be aware. Yeah. Right. To be aware that this is happening and that you don't just slide down the slippery slope. And then in January, you're like, how do I get out of this hole? Yeah. So awareness is where is the first step to any kind of change, whatever change that is. And however small or big, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So become aware and also use the awareness as a proactive is being proactive for future holidays. So the first thing is just be aware. And then the second thing is to pull out those tools, which we just mentioned grace and space. And so you said something about ask your mama. Oh yeah. So um, when I, there's a really amazing uh, woman who does finance uh, advice. I'm going to forget her name, but she calls herself the financista, I think is her like moniker. Anyway, she talks about the budget that you set for yourself as being kind of like your mama. Like when you go to ask permission to do something, does the budget say you can do it or not? And you can do this with yourself and the tools as that you have as well. Like you can remind, you can write down, the plan that you're going to put forward, you can, you can write it down. You can get it set in your head. You know, what are the things, the tools that I have at my ready and available, you know, to me that I'm going to use. Like breathing, to, like breathing, like breathing, like, breathing. like yes. okay, already I'm thinking like, write it down tools. Oh my gosh. No, it can be breathing like a breath work, oh. right? Yes. And it can be in the moment, but the idea is, is your, you know, instead of just like plowing forward and doing whatever you want and then living with the dire consequences later, you're taking a sec and you're saying, what can I do that would be better? Like, just what's the, what's the, you know, how can I build myself a moment? How can I make a better choice? Um, and it might not be the best choice ever, but maybe it's better than the worst choice you were going to make. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we always are making choices. That's the next thing. And the other thing too, is that there's external and internal cues, right? <clears throat> so one is how you're, how are you feeling physically? How, what's going on mentally being aware? What are my thoughts? How am I feeling emotionally? 
is there something going on with my body that I need to honor it? Like go for a walk or whatever and prioritize those internal cues so that again, even if it's a little bit of a tweak, you are being proactive in your life. You're not being a victim of anything, right? And and then there's that external cue, right? So the external cues are um, maybe somebody says something to you, or maybe there is this beautiful buffet of food that, you know, so there's those external cues too. Yeah. I have um, a great one with my partner because he knows me so well. It's been, you know, 20 some years that we've been together, but, um, and we do it with each other. Like when somebody's getting snappy or like real short tempered, we have this thing where we just say hello to each other again. Like we just like, hello, hey, hi there. And it's like, it snaps you into being like, oh, right. Like I'm not acting appropriately. And I love this person. Like, why would I do this to them? And so sometimes that external cue comes from the people that know us best and are just trying to keep us from, you know, causing more problems for ourselves. Exactly. And again, it kind of goes into like awareness and snapping out of this, you know, <laughs> fight or flight moment where you're having a well, fight. Yeah. You know, and moving into this frontal lobe of logical care, you know, so mm -hmm. That too is awareness. And then that third thing is of, of, of embracing is the self-care, the self-love, the, and just acknowledge it's hard work. Like it's well, hard, hard work. And when you're trying to make a lifestyle change or support a healthier lifestyle in your life, like good on you for even putting the effort in, no matter how many times you get knocked back, the thing that you really need to embrace is the fact that you're on the path and you get up again and you keep going. And celebrate. I just had a, a healing session. And when we got all done, she said, I wonder what it would feel like if you acknowledged all the good things you're doing. Cause I was like, really, really having a hard time. And she's like, you said that you made dinner for yourself. You said that you took a nap. You said, even though it was just a very short nap, but I did it. And so I think that's the other thing. She's like, that's a, that's a reflection of self-love. And maybe you could just celebrate and love your love that you did that for yourself. Because a lot of times if we do do something that is just we know is a good habit or is knows is part of our lifestyle that makes us a better person we take it for granted. And so yeah. part of embracing is like celebrate and embrace how great you are and what a good job you're doing. And for me, again, I sometimes like to take a step outside of myself. Um, and in meditation, right, we call it the observer, take a moment to be the observer in your own life. Um, but part of that for me, when I do it is I take a step outside of myself. And I was like, if I was meeting this person, like, what would I love about, like, what, like, and I'm seeing their life, like, where would, I, like, where would I try to be more like them? Like, wow, that's amazing. Like, they're doing these things. They're taking care of themselves in this way. Like, that's fantastic. They're really good at, you know, for me personally, like, they're really good at, like, talking to other people and having conversations and meeting folks. Like, that's awesome. So just yeah. give yourself that love about the things that you're good at, the things that you're trying to get better at, and the things that, um you know, worked. I bet you, like, if you've been thinking about this a lot, I bet you there's at least one moment during the holiday season where you can look back and say, you know what? That did work. Like I did get better sleep that night. Let's encourage that people. Yeah. Let's encourage people to put that down for us. Like share something. I love that we can end with this. Share something that you're really proud of yourself that was a step in the right direction of maybe an intention that you had set for this particular holiday. So one of my intentions is, is no alcohol. Just oh, yeah. like, why? you know, why would I do that to my brain and body? It doesn't make me feel good the next day. It's right. fun. I mean, the list of cocktails are amazing. And if, and I was out with friends and I was so tempted <laughs> I was so tempted 
And I, and there was, I was just like, oh, just, it's the holidays. Just go ahead and have one drink. Well, he brought over my hot water. They didn't even have hot, they didn't even have teas there. Only alcohol and hot water. Oh, wow. And I did it, you know? And I was like, and I, when I got home, I thought, wow, you didn't have any alcohol. Like you actually were tempted multiple times. It's, it's not that you couldn't have it. You know, it's like. $16 a cocktail. I mean, there's that. So, so I just, I did acknowledge that it was like, wow, I'm really glad that I didn't go there. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I would love to hear what other people are doing, you know, whether it's. Yes. I'm going to see if the grace, the space or the embrace. Let's hear from everybody. And right. then we are going to do a sleep reset on Tuesday, January 2nd. So it'll be perfect timing. Yes. It'll be 10 a.m. while you're taking down the decorations or cleaning up the house or taking a breath. Just tune in. You don't even have to look at us. You can just listen. And then two, go to sleepblissful.com because I've got all kinds of resources there from wonderful pillows to an, uh, an opt-in for sleep tips. How about you, Helen? Well, I would love if folks would check out sleeplists.com. Uh, and I have some resources there. I have all of my episodes of sleep lists. If you're having trouble sleeping, that's a great place to go and listen. And if you're listening on other podcast players, please follow, subscribe, rate, review. All of that is wonderful and helps a ton. Um, and also make sure that you get more information uh, as it comes out in the new year. Yes. Happy holidays, everybody. Much love and joy and bliss. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And we will see you in the new year. Wonderful.